The secret to a lot of forecasting exam questions is just staying organized. You can see that in these short time series questions here. Okay, let's look. Given an actual demand of 59 in March, a March forecast of 64, and an alpha of 0.3, what would be the forecast for April using exponential smoothing? Okay, now what is it that I mean by uh, staying organized? All right, simple question, one sentence. Now, first off, uh, asking for exponential smoothing, let me think, what is the formula for that? Your forecast for a certain period is your forecast for the period before plus alpha times what actually happened the period before minus the forecast for the period before, right? That's just flat out the formula, like from a formula sheet. Now, why did I jot that here? Because given an actual demand of 59 in March, I want to code this information in the sentence in terms of that formula. Now, an actual, that's an A. Um, they said March. I'm not going to write like T minus 1 or T. I'm going to write what they told me. The actual for March is 59. A March forecast of 64. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to try to squeeze my work in here. So, wait a minute. F for forecast. They said March. 64. And an alpha. Oh, alpha. So, jot that down over here. Alpha of 0.3. What would be the forecast for April? Oh, okay, the forecast for April is the forecast for March plus alpha times what actually happened in March minus the forecast for March. Uh, all I gotta do is piece it together. Let's see, the forecast for, I'll just put April, is the forecast for March, okay, that was 64, plus alpha, okay, that was 0.3. I'm just piecing it together, staying organized. Okay, the actual for March was 59 minus the forecast for March, 64. Oh, okay, and then I, well, I, then I just do the computations. That's where I get D, 62.5. Okay, now next question. Next question is also a simple exponential smoothing question. Um, simple exponential smoothing is being used to forecast demand. Yeah, the previous forecast of 66. Here's what I talk about staying organized. F for forecast, previous forecast. That is another way of saying F T minus 1 of 66. I just found a piece of this formula. Turned out to be, now, let me be careful, four units less than actual demand. That means I can determine what the actual demand that period was because the forecast was four units less than the actual. So that means the actual had to have been 66 plus that four or 70, right? That would make that sentence correct. Um, oh, all right. Uh, the, wait a minute. The next forecast is 66.6. Well, the next forecast from this one would be F sub T. And they're saying we have the answer with 66.6. Right, because they're asking what's the alpha. Oh, same expression up here, except this is the part that's missing in this question, right? So I just say, all right, well, I have the FT, that is 66.6 .6 equals 66, the forecast for the period before, plus alpha is what's missing, times what actually happened the period before, 70 minus what we had forecast, 66. Okay, so here I solve for alpha. When you solve for alpha, that's where we get. 0.15. All right, now, speaking of staying organized, this is not simple exponential smoothing. Let's look. Jim's Bicycle Company provided you with the following data on their past sale of unicycles. Oh, okay, time series data, October through to January. What's the question? Predict sales for February of 2013 using a three-month moving average. Okay, Time series questions tend to be simple. In order to get full credit, we just have to maintain focus on what was asked for. First off, first thing to focus on is what 
was asked for in terms of a period. What, what do you want me to forecast and where is that located in my data? Now, this said February of 2013. That means it's right here below January of 2013. And so I'm going to jot in a reminder. That means I want to forecast what happens right here. But they could have actually oddly asked for a couple other different months. We just would want to have noted that. And you say, yeah, but why? Because second thing to focus on, what, what technique am I supposed to use? Three month moving average. Simple. Average the past three months. I needed to locate where the forecast was to figure out which past three months to average. If we're here, January, December, and November are the past three months. Okay, so that is where we get the conclusion that the forecast would be 39 because it's the average of 42, 44, and 31. Now, most people can average three numbers. They have no problem with that. But actually in its day, this seemingly simple question, what often went wrong for people is they grabbed the wrong three numbers. For instance, just for instance, the 40, 42, and 44, they grabbed the top three in the list. That is a forecast, but that's actually a forecast for January, not February. Anyway, we don't want to make it more complicated than it is. Let's look at this one. Oh, okay, this one's kind of in the style of triple true false. It's about interpreting errors. Here are the errors associated with a particular forecast over the past five months in chronological order. Okay, so somebody forecast and then we found out what happened and this is the error. 2, 5, 0, negative 5, negative 10. Which of the following statements are true? So we want to test them one at a time. Now. Speaking of staying organized, what we might want to jot is a little reminder to ourselves, capital E for error. Error is always actual minus forecast. Okay, just a little reminder because the forecast is too high during the fifth month. This is the error. The error is negative 10. That is a true statement. Okay, because error is always actual minus forecast. When your forecast is too high, that's how you goofed, you have a negative error. When your forecast is too low, it turns out it was too puny. You didn't forecast enough. Notice that your error is positive because it's actual minus forecast. This is what we call counterintuitive. People want to flip that, make it the opposite in their mind. It's just not. Remember, actual minus forecast. Okay, first statement's true. Second statement, the mean error over these past four months is 4.4. That is false. I get a mean error of about negative 1.6 because mean error is you just average those five numbers. If you had tried these on your own and had agreed with that statement, oops, maybe what you did is you accidentally calculated the mean absolute deviation, because it's 4.4, okay, but that's not what was asked for, so that's false. Now, the forecast was perfectly accurate during one of the months we're looking for a zero, I see it, yes, so this is true. So that's how we arrive at the conclusion that the top and the bottom are true. So that would have been partial credit and that would have been partial credit. Okay, so there, that sorts that one. Now, next page. Below are the seasonal relatives, also known as seasonal index numbers, that describe the weekly fluctuation in the number of distinct users logging into some certain website, also known as unique appearances per day. Okay, so here are the days of the week, and here is a seasonal index. It has already been prepared for us. Okay, so first question, what could the first question possibly be about? It's about interpreting this particular index. Oh, okay, well then let's take these statements one at a time. Monday is the busiest day of the week in terms of the number of unique appearances. If that is true, that means that Monday will have the highest seasonal relative. It will have the highest number in that set of numbers of all of them. That would make it the busiest day of the week. Now let's just look. Monday's index number or relative is 1.25 and that's the biggest number on the list. It's true. Second statement, only 60% of users log in on Saturday. Um, Saturday I see 0 0.66. Saturday is the smallest number on that particular list. That is false. You say, huh? 
The business about the statement said that only 66% of users log in on Saturday, that is not what the 0.66 means. That's just a distractor. That was just made up. Now, actually, it's not what it asked, but the fact that the 0.66 was the smallest number on the list is telling you that Saturday is actually the slowest day. There are the fewest number of users generally logging into the website. That's what that means, but it doesn't mean that it's 66% of all users. It's not telling you anything about the percentage. Oh, okay. Last statement. Fridays are busier than Thursdays in terms of the number of unique appearances per day. Again, size of index number. That means that Friday's number will be larger than Thursday's number. Is that true? Friday's number is 0.94. Thursday's number is 1.09, 1.94, That is false. It looks like Thursdays are busier than Fridays. Okay, so only the top survived here. So that is one only. So that one would have been partial credit. Now, last question in this set. Suppose someone has given you a forecast for the first full week of next month. An overall number, an, oh, okay, we have a forecast for the entire week. The forecast for the entire week is 3,500 appearances. Based on this estimate, which of the following is the most logical estimate of the number of unique appearances on Thursday of that week? Oh, right. If we have a seasonal index, like we've been provided with one here, there are two things we can do with it. We can use it to deseasonalize data. Usually we're doing some kind of analysis. Or we can use it to seasonalize data. That is usually done in the course of forecasting specific days. That's exactly what this question is about. Because you say, all right, Thursday. The forecast for the week is 3,500. This is just logic. If I take the 3,500 and I divide it by 7, because there's 7 days in the week, that's implying, well, like about 500 people a day, right? Yes. But, oh, and that's one of the choices, actually. You can see it's one of the distractors. But that 500 is what we know as a deseasonalized number because if you believe that 500 people are going to log in each day, that means you believe that the same amount of people are going to log in each day. And you already know from our earlier discussion that Thursdays are busier than Fridays and Mondays, the busiest day of the week. And that's not true. It's not the same amount of people logging in every day. Ah, it's missing the season, which is to say here the day of the week. It's easy to seasonalize it. We just know which season, remember the days of the week are the season here, are they asking? They're asking Thursday, go retrieve that index number, take the deseasonalized number, and multiply it by the index number. That is what is theoretically, anyway, sprinkling in the influence of Thursday based on the overall weekly forecast of 3,500, we would expect about 545 people to log in on Thursday.